Hi guys, this is Zuleika from Edureka. Machine learning and data science are the most significant domains in today's world. All the sci-fi stuff that you see happening in this world is a contribution from fields like data science, AI and machine learning. With this in mind, we'll be looking at an interesting topic today. We'll discuss the distinction between machine learning and data science. So without any further delay, let's take a look at today's agenda. So we're going to begin this session with defining what exactly data science is. After that, we'll move on and look at what machine learning is. We'll briefly discuss the fields that come under data science. After that, we'll discuss a use case where we'll see how data science and machine learning are used in recommendation engines. All right. So without any further delay, let's get started with our first topic. Now, before we get into the details of data science, let's understand how data science came into existence. Do you guys remember when most of the data was stored in Excel sheets? There were simpler times because we generated lesser data and the data was quite structured. Back then, we used simple BI or business intelligent tools to analyze and process the data. But times have changed. Over 2.5 quintillion bytes of data is created every single day. And this number is only going to grow from here. It is estimated that by 2020, 1.7 MB of data will be created every second for every person on Earth. Can you imagine how much data that is? How are we going to process this much data? Not only that, the data generated these days is mostly unstructured or semi-structured. So in order to process such data, we need more complex and effective algorithms. We need a more advanced field. This is exactly where data science comes in. Data science is all about uncovering findings from data by exploring data at a granular level to mine and understand complex behaviors, trends and inferences in the data. It's about surfacing hidden insights that can help enable companies to make smarter business decisions. For example, I'm sure all of you have binge watched on Netflix. Now, Netflix data mines movie viewing patterns of its users to understand what drives user interest. And then it uses this data to make decisions on which Netflix series to produce. Similarly, there is Target. Now, Target identifies each customer's shopping behaviors by drawing out patterns from their database. All right, this helps them uh, make better marketing decisions. Now that you know why data science is important and what exactly it is, let's move ahead and discuss what machine learning is. So guys, the idea behind machine learning is that you teach machines by feeding them data and letting them learn on their own without any human intervention. To understand machine learning, let's consider a small scenario. All right, let's say that You've enrolled for some skating classes and you have no prior experience of skating. So initially you'd be pretty bad at it because you have no idea about how to skate. But as you observe and pick up more information, you get better at it. Observing is just another way of collecting data. Just like how we humans learn from our observations and our experiences, machines are also capable of learning on their own when they are fed a good amount of data. This is exactly how machine learning works. It's the process of getting machines to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. So guys, machine learning begins with reading and observing the training data to find useful insights and patterns in order to build a model that predicts the correct outcomes. So the performance of the model is then evaluated by using the testing data set. Now this process is carried out until the machine automatically learns and maps the input to the correct output without any human intervention. All right. I hope all of you have a good idea about what machine learning is. Now, if you guys want to study more about machine learning or data science, I'm going to leave links in the description. Y'all can check out those videos and then probably get back to this video. All right. Now let's move on to our next topic. So guys, before we start comparing between machine learning and data science, let's try to understand the different fields which are covered under data science. Now, data science covers a wide spectrum of domains, including artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning. Data science uses various AI, machine learning and deep learning methodologies in order to analyze data and then extract useful insights from it. To make things more clear, let me define these terms for you. So artificial intelligence is basically a subset of data science, which lets machines to stimulate human like behavior. OK, so they try to mimic human like behavior. Machine learning, on the other hand, is a subfield of artificial intelligence, which provides machines the ability to learn automatically and then improve from experiences without being explicitly programmed or without any human intervention. 
Now, deep learning is a part of machine learning that uses various computational measures and algorithms inspired by the structure and function of the brain called the artificial neural networks. So guys, to conclude, data science involves the extraction of knowledge from data. And in order to do so, it uses a bunch of different methods from various disciplines like machine learning, artificial intelligence, and deep learning. A point to note here is that data science is a wider field and does not exclusively rely on these techniques. Okay, there's a lot more to data science. And in fact, there's a lot more to machine learning, AI, and deep learning than just the data science part. All right. Now that you have a clear distinction between AI machine learning and deep learning, let's discuss a use case. Okay, here we'll be uh, seeing how data science and machine learning is used in the working of recommendation engines. So before we start off by comparing data science and machine learning, let's look at what exactly a recommendation engine is. So I'm sure all of you have used Amazon for online shopping. Okay, so guys, have you noticed that when you look for a particular item on Amazon, you get recommendations of similar products, right? So how does Amazon know this? How does it show you items which are relevant to your interests? The reason why companies like Amazon, Walmart, and Netflix are doing so well is because of how they handle the user-generated data. All of these companies are data-driven companies. So the key to their business has always been data, and that's the reason why they're growing so much. Now, a recommendation system basically filters down a list of choices for each user based on their browsing history, based on their ratings, based on their profile details, transactional details, card details, and so on. Now, such a system is used to get useful insights about customers' shopping patterns. It provides every user a particular view of the e-commerce website based on their profile, okay? And it allows them to select relevant products. For example, if you're looking uh, for a new laptop on Amazon, there is a possibility that you might want to buy a laptop bag too. Now, Amazon will decide this possibility by studying the details of similar transactions. All right, it maps similar uh, transactions together and then it suggests relevant items to you. All right, now let's see how data science and machine learning are used to build a recommendation engine. So guys, this is the entire data science lifecycle. Now, it starts off with the business requirements. Now, before you even start on a data science project, it is very important that you understand the problem that you're trying to solve. All right, so in this stage, you're just going to identify the central objective of your project. In our case, the objective is to build a recommendation engine that will suggest relevant items to each customer based on the data generated by them. Now, the second stage is data acquisition or data gathering. So after you define the objectives of your project, it's time to start gathering the data. This process is also known as data mining. Data mining is basically the process of gathering your data from different sources. Now, one more thing to note here is that data sources can be of two types. There is explicit data and implicit data. Now, when it comes to a recommendation engine, the explicit data includes all the data which is entered by the users, such as the users' ratings and comments on the products. Implicit data is the purchase history, like your card details, your search history, and all of that comes under implicit data. Now, collecting such data is easy because the users uh, don't have to do any extra work since they're already using this application. All right. Now, the next phase after data acquisition is data processing or data cleaning. So, guys, usually you will never have data stored directly in a database. Okay, if you're very lucky, only then that's going to happen. Otherwise, you'll need to scrape the data. All right. This is where you transform your data into the desired formats so that you can read it. Now, data cleaning is considered one of the most time consuming tasks in data science. According to a recent survey, it was found out that about 50 to 80 percent of the time goes in data cleaning. All right, this can be a very tedious task because you don't know what are the relevant items and what are the missing values. Okay, so you have to remove all the irrelevant items or all of the inconsistent data. Okay, these inconsistencies have to be identified and fixed in this stage itself. For example, if you're filtering the needful logs from the less needful ones, or if you're trying to identify fake reviews, or if you're trying to remove unnecessary comments or missing values, all of that is dealt with in this stage. All right. So after you're done with your data cleaning and your data processing, your next stage is the data exploration. This is a very critical stage because here you try to understand the patterns in your data and you try to retrieve any useful insights. 
Now, in our case, since each user might have a different taste or they might have a different opinion about an item, their respective data sets will be different. Okay, so each user will have a different data set depending on his likes and his dislikes. This is how you perform data exploration over here. You need to find patterns or behaviors of a particular customer and such information is used to grow the business. So only after you know what a customer likes or dislikes, you'll be able to suggest or recommend something to them. All right, this is exactly how data exploration works when it comes to a recommendation engine. You're just going to study the shopping behavior of each customer and then try and suggest relevant items to each customer. All right, now let's move on to the next stage, which is the data modeling stage. So guys, there's this one important thing I want to tell you all. There is no actual distinction between data science and machine learning. In fact, machine learning is a method which is used by data science in order to retrieve useful information. All right, so there's no actual distinction between them, but they do have different processes or they do have different steps in the processes. So the next stage that I'm going to talk about in the data science lifecycle is known as modeling. And at this data modeling stage is where you incorporate machine learning. All right, so basically the entire data modeling stage is the machine learning process. Okay, so let's look at the machine learning process. So guys, the five stages that I've defined over here are basically the steps in the data modeling phase. Okay, now in the data modeling phase is where machine learning is implemented. So let's look at how machine learning works. Okay, step by step. So there are five uh, distinctive stages in machine learning. It begins with importing your data. So guys, the data that we already gathered in the previous stages, you're going to import that data for the machine learning process. Now this data has to be in a readable format. Okay, it can be in the table format or you can also use formats like the comma separated versions. All right, after you've imported the data, the next step is data cleaning. Now I know that we already performed data processing and data cleaning, but guys, data cleaning is a very iterative process. You cannot just clean everything at once. You'll have to do this repetitively and iteratively. So after you import the data, you might notice a lot of duplicate values or a lot of missing or null values. So such inconsistencies in the data can cause wrongful predictions. Okay, and they have to be dealt with or they have to be removed at this stage itself. Now the next stage in uh, machine learning is creating a model. Over here, you perform the data splicing. Now data splicing is basically splitting the data set into two sets. One is for training your model and the other is for testing your model. Okay, after this, you build the model by using the training data set. Now, how do you create these models? These models are nothing but your machine learning algorithms like k-nearest neighbor algorithm, support vector machines, linear regression, and so on. So for a problem statement like a recommendation engine, you can make use of clustering and classification algorithms. All right, you can make use of the k-nearest neighbor or the k-means algorithm. So after you've built the algorithm and you've built your model, your next stage is going to be model training. So over here, the machine learning model is trained on the training data set. Earlier, I told you that we perform data splicing wherein we split the data set into the training set and the testing set. So in model training, obviously, you're going to use the training data set. Also, let me tell you that a large portion of the data set is used for training so that the model can learn to map the input to the output on a set of varied values. Next step in machine learning is the model testing. Now, after you've trained the model, it is then evaluated by using the testing data set. At this stage, the model is fed new data points and it must predict the outcome by running the new data points on the machine learning model that was built in the earlier stage. Now, the last stage is improving the efficiency of the model, right? So after you create the model and you evaluate it using the testing data, its accuracy is calculated. So guys, a lot of methods can be used for improving the accuracy. You can make use of cross validation techniques and all of that. So after you improve the accuracy and the efficiency of your model, you can finally come back to the last phase of the data lifecycle, which is deployment and optimization. Okay, so the aim of this stage is basically to deploy the model into the production environment. So basically, this is your endpoint wherein you deploy the recommendation engine on your e-commerce website or on any sort of data-driven website. All right. So apart from uh, deploying it to production, you must also check the performance of your model. Okay, so the users must validate the performance of the model. And if there are any issues with the model, then the issues have to be fixed in this stage itself. All right. So guys, that was it for our use case. We basically studied the entire data science lifecycle and the machine learning process. 
So guys, I want to conclude that data science and machine learning are interconnected. Okay, since machine learning is a part of data science, there isn't much comparison between them. Okay, they are separate cycles, but they are used together. Okay, so machine learning aids data science by providing a suite of algorithms for data modeling, for decision making, or even data preparation. Okay, on the other hand, data science, what it does is it stitches together a bunch of ideas or a bunch of algorithms drawn from machine learning to create a basic solution. All right. So guys, with this, we come to the end of today's session. If you have any doubts regarding today's session, please leave them in the comment section and we'll get back to you at the earliest. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!